The final epic conclusion of Galactus Doom versus this impromptu Fantastic Four has arrived. Marvel 2-in-1 number 6 is next. I'm Stan, and this is Detail Comics. What's up, everybody? This is Preview Picks, the show where I go over comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know if it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. Make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about right now is Marvel 2-in-1 number 6, which has been one of the best books coming out of Marvel. Chip Zdarsky is writing a fantastic, fantastic four, and overall the experience of seeing Ben Grimm, the Human Torch, and now infamous Iron Man blasting their way into the multiverse to take on a Galactus-powered Doom, or Doom-powered Galactus, whatever the hell you're really thinking about, is just epic. So what I want to do is dive into this and see exactly what's going on. One of the best comic books to come out of Marvel Legacy, Marvel 2-in-1, starring The Thing and the Human Torch, has finally reached issue number 6, and we we come to the final cosmic conclusion of the battle between the Fantastic Four and Victor Von Doom in the body of Galactus. Of course, it is no standard Fantastic Four. As we open up the story, we actually see the infamous Iron Man, and while he's here, he's working with the Reed Richards from this alternate universe to try and find a solution to the Galactus Doom problem. And this is something that causes Reed to jump into a little bit of sentiment. He feels like this is the right kind of situation. If Victor Von Doom and Reed Richards could normally just move past whatever conflicts they have, they could do so much for humanity. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, that just doesn't seem to be the case in the history, as Galactus Doom has arrived at the end of issue number five and is now facing down this entire kind of fleet of shield sword carriers that are out in space. And what we find is that Reed is actually on the ship with Sue Storm, the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Ben Grimm, Human Torch, and infamous Iron Man are headed out into space to come to this conflict. But there's one thing that Victor Von Doom's Galactus Doom is not anticipating, and that is a gigantic Pym particle enhanced Ben Grimm's thing growing to his size, beyond the size of a planet so that that way they can go toe-to-toe, one-on-one, fisticuffs swinging in space. And that is just one of the coolest visuals that you could possibly put into this. A gigantic thing versus a gigantic doom. It's just so cool. Sue Storm is using her powers to enhance Ben Grimm, provide him with shielding so that that way he can survive the rigors of space. The upgraded pin particles aren't going to last much, but punching Victor Von Doom in the face is going to be enough to keep him distracted and allow infamous Iron Man and the Human Torch to dispatch the doom bots that are currently accosting every ship that's currently in their fleet. While Galactus Doom can tell that this isn't the Ben Grimm from his universe, the one that was killed with the first encounter with Galactus, Reed Richards' hologram pops up into space, and we finally learn exactly what happened to the Human Torch. It's something that we suspected since the very beginning of this actual universal encounter, and that is that the Human Torch, Johnny Storm, has been the artificial sun for Earth ever since Galactus Doom took over and started eviscerating the rest of the universe. Stuck in this false orbit, sacrificing the entirety of his life, a true sacrifice from a true hero. But with Roshna's help as well as Reed Richards' development, the Luminette has activated, allowing the Human Torch to escape his orbiting prison, and that puts him toe-to-toe -to -toe with Victor Von Doom himself. Ben Grimm shrinks down to size. The infamous Iron Man grabs the Human Torch, who is about to be destroyed by one of these silver Doom bots because his flames are woefully inadequate, but also it seems like Victor Von Doom has some ulterior motives. As he starts his conversation with Emma Frost, we get the idea of exactly what this plan is. Emma Frost, one of the most powerful telepaths on the planet is going to swap positions with Galactus Doom, bringing Doom into her body and then transferring her consciousness into Galactus, so that way she can avoid consuming the universe. Norrin Rad, who's there to assist Emma, is dispatched by Victor Von Doom as he grasps Emma, keeping her away from the machine as the final conflict between the Human Torch and Galactus Doom comes to a close. Johnny Storm of this universe, he's expended everything that he possibly can, and it's time for Doom. Doom, the person that pioneered this technology, the only person that can control such an amazing and awesome power. Power. He is the only one, he is the person that needs to transfer to swap with this Doom from this universe and control Galactus. But that isn't true. Johnny Storm appeals to his humanity, saying that you have changed. You keep telling us that you've changed. Prove that you've changed. Do not invite power, such a great power, into your life to corrupt you again. Stick to the plan, and we're going to succeed. That is why we win. So as they position this kind of psychic transfer device, we see it fire into the forehead of Doom. Doom face to face with Doom. As we we see Emma Frost transfer into the body of Galactus. This universe is Victor Von Doom transporting himself into Emma's body as he slowly dies. He's seen everything. He's seen alternate universes. He's seen all the lives. The Fantastic Four always comes back, and Victor is always their villain. But those are the words of a desperate and dying man as we see Emma take up the mantle of Galactus. Roshna has transported some sort of Trojan horse into Emma before she transferred into Galactus Doom's mind, becoming a very familiar sight when it comes to Galactus. Now, she's a life bringer. 
meant to restore the universe. And as she goes out there and wanders the universe, we actually see the body of Victor Von Doom buried as Galen, the original Galactus. He went mad inside the human body of Victor Von Doom, and, and Victor Von Doom of this universe's consciousness is gone as it passed away with Emma Frost. But that leaves a few things to be discussed. First, Johnny Storm, no longer needing to be the son of this world, transfers the cosmic power back to Norrin Rad, who becomes the Silver Surfer, to act as the herald for Emma Frost Galactus as she goes out and it becomes the life bringer restoring the universe. And then the final conversation happens between this universe's Reed Richards and Ben Grimm's thing. He's taken a look at the multisect. He's done some scans. He's seen the very specific nature of their energy. They are from a specific universe. There shouldn't be a scattershot approach to exactly what happens. So when he scanned the multiverse, he found nothing. He didn't see the Fantastic Four, and we know that's because they live outside the multiverse. They are the creative tools for this multiverse. They don't live in the various parts, various other universes, unless you see some sort of signature that's really dealing with the, the exploration or the expansion of one of those universes. But it comes to a conclusion that Ben already knows, that Reed and Sue, from their universe, they're dead. And that brings a very serious kind of moral question into focus, because we know that the Fantastic Four is returning. We're not sure if it's the original Fantastic Four, we have to believe it is, because we've seen all this promotional artwork, but how is it going to transition? How is Marvel 2-in-1 going to coincide with the Fantastic Four that's coming from Dan Slott and Sarah Pacelli, especially with these very heavy, weighty, emotional things that Chip Zdarsky's doing inside Marvel 2-in-1, which I continue to state is one of the best, if not the best, comic book coming out of Marvel right now. It's a thing that you've got to think about and that is going to be hard to resolve for Marvel, but I can't wait to see what they do. I'm really glad that Jim Chung was back for the last issue of this particular arc because he's the one that kicked it all off, and his art style is so unique, and I'm, I'm interested to see who the next person to take up the mantle of Marvel 2-in-1 is, but I want to know what you guys think about this book, so hit me up in the comments down below, and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.